Hey guys, welcome to a new video and today we are doing something really fun. I am going to do my makeup using only historical DIY makeup products. Now, before we get started, there are a few things I have to say, of course, about historical beauty DIYs. And that is that a great many of the recipes that are still out there that survive from historical periods are not safe. And we know now that they are poisonous, dangerous, and even can be deadly. I'm sure you've all heard about, you know, the lead poisoning that was very prevalent in the 18th century and just throughout all periods where white face paint was used a lot. And there are more ingredients like that, arsenic, belladonna, uh, that were used throughout history to beautify the skin or the eyes or just appearance in general. And we now know that they are super, super dangerous and there are more ingredients like that in historical beauty DIYs. So if you ever do attempt to recreate historical DIYs, be sure to do your research on each of the ingredients first, make sure that they are safe. So that is kind of the biggest reason why I had a limited number of recipes to choose from for this video. The other two reasons are more personal. Many of the ingredients, actually I'd say most of the ingredients in historical beauty DIYs are animal derived, very many are animal derived or use animal derived ingredients or are just extremely hard, if not impossible for me to come by. There are a couple of ingredients that I have tried to find that were very difficult for me to find at all and when I did find them they turned out to be super expensive and just not readily available in the Netherlands at this moment. So I have found a couple of recipes that should allow me to do pretty much a full face of makeup that are all safe, all easily accessible. So yes, with that said, let's get started. I think I'm gonna do all the DIYs first and then I'm going to apply it and see what it looks like on my face. I think I'm going to start by making my face powder because that's a very essential part um, all throughout history pretty much. What I'm going to do is uh, following a Victorian recipe and I am going to be using a base of rice flour here. So I'm going to add a little bit of that into my little cup here. And that's obviously a beautiful white powder to give me a desirable pale complexion. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of pigments. Now, pigments would have been made in all various different ways, mostly bought from a pharmacy, honestly. So I'm going to be using this colored face powder for that. I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit to give this a little bit of color. And they would have used all different kinds of colors, really. Oftentimes they would just use white, but colored face powders had the added benefit of kind of color correcting. So they would use anything from pinks to yellows to lavender even. So here is my concoction so far. Carefully stir that together and then one thing that this definitely needs is scent. Face powders would have been scented definitely in the Victorian era. Before that as well, 18th century, 17th century. For a huge chunk of history, there wasn't much of a distinction between cosmetics, makeup and perfumes. They all kind of served the same purpose of making a person more beautiful. So many of the cosmetics actually were just scented powders um, or scented oils that really mostly served the purpose of providing a nice scent. So a popular scent in this era would have been bergamot, which is fantastic because it's one of my favorites and I have it available here. I'm using an essential oil, so I'm really going to be super careful with this and just add one drop. That should do it. And of course, whenever you add a liquid to a powder, you don't want to add too much or the powder will no longer be a powder. Now I'm going to sift this to make sure there are no clumps. So I have a second little cup here. And the sieve, just gonna dump that in. Don't want any clumps in our face powder. And now the powder that I have left, I am going to take a little square of cotton. This is just a piece of scrap fabric that I have. I'm going to take this powder, place it in the center of my little square of fabric, which I'm then going to close up. and tie with a little elastic. Now, of course, mine is super tiny because I only intend to use this once, but this is going to be my applicator. 
I should be able to stamp this onto my face and have a little bit of powder come out if my fabric isn't too tightly woven. If it is, we'll try something else, but this is the historically accurate method of applying this. So face powder, done. Now the next thing I'm going to make is from a very different time period. Uh, this is a Second World War recipe for mascara. So I have a mortar and pestle here and I am going to use Vaseline and charcoal to make mascara. Yes, I am going to be mixing time periods. I'm gonna be using just a tiny little bit of my artist charcoal. It's the easiest stuff I have access to. I just had this lying around. So I'm just gonna use a tiny little bit, maybe just break it off with a spoon. If you want, you could also use soot. Burnt cork was used a lot as well. So I have a little bit of charcoal in here. And I'm just going to grind this up until it's super fine. There we go. And then it's time to add the Vaseline. So I'm just gonna take a little scoop and add that to my charcoal. I think I may have used way too much Vaseline for the amount of charcoal that was in here. This is also making the most disgusting sound ever. <laughs> so I might just add a little bit more charcoal. Where is it here? The rest of the products I'm going to use are actually already finished because I have a bottle of beetroot juice here, which is going to be my blush and lip tint. And I also have some pure castor oil, which is going to go on my eyelids. All right, let's get started. I think I'm actually going to get started with the beetroot juice. I feel like that should be my lowest layer. I really hope this works because beetroot stains are no joke, guys. And I still have somewhere to go tonight. I assume I only need a tiny amount. So I'm just gonna put that in this little cup. Don't spill it. Mm, it smells good. Shouldn't be too different from a regular face stain though. So I am going to apply it with my fingers, which is going to stain my fingers as well. But I do think I will get the cleanest application that way. All right, let's just, let's just go ahead and do this. I'm gonna use a tiny amount. I just dipped my finger in once. Gonna spread that across my cheeks. Oh man, that is intense. Okay, it's intense, but it's not super horrible. Color's quite nice. So that one dip is a lot still. So I'm just gonna tap my finger off at the side there. Okay, so this needs to be applied super, super sparingly apparently, which shouldn't really come as a surprise. I mean, it's beet juice. But honestly, I don't think the result is half bad. My cheeks always react to being touched. So I think some of this redness will still come down. Yeah, I actually don't think this is Horrible at all. So let's do my lips next. And for that, I can use a bit more because I can get away with a brighter color on my lips. That is actually honestly really pretty. So I'm just gonna wash my hands really quickly before this settles into my finger too much. And then I'll be back. I have to say I'm quite happy so far. So let's move on to the powder. I did decide to put it in a different baggie after all. Um, this one just has a little bit of a bigger structure so that the powder can actually come through. And I also think it's kind of little. <laughs> I'll probably spend a long time trying to cover my face in this. But yes, uh, what you do with this is just kind of stamp it onto the face. Ooh, this smells delicious. Love the bergamot. Is anything still coming out or is it not? I can't really tell. Seems like Something only comes out if I pound it really hard. <laughs> and I'm not sure how much of that I want to do on my face, but again, it's not too bad. Obviously my baggie is less than ideal. Is it just me or does my face actually look wider than when I started? I mean whiter, not wider. Oh yeah, there is definitely, I don't, I'm not wearing my glasses so I can't really see myself unless I lean into the mirror a bit more, but there is definitely powder on my face and a lot of it. I think I should stop. I think I should stop applying that now. I think we're good here. Um, yeah, it is a rather chunky powder, I must say. This definitely rice powder, rice flour, is definitely something that have been, would have been used by the lower classes. Um, upper classes would have used stuff like French chalk. This will do for a kind of DIY at home kitchen 
based look. For the eyelids, this is a Victorian beauty trick. Some women would use castor oil on their eyelids to attract light to the eyes and kind of make them pop and stand out more without actually using makeup because this was a time period where wearing visible makeup was frowned upon very much so definitely eyeshadow was out of the question. So I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of castor oil on my eyelids. I don't want to use too much because I don't want this to drip down my eyelids and interfere with my DIY mascara that I'm going to apply in a bit. But at this point I can't see anything at all, so maybe a little bit more. Again, not bad actually. I wasn't expecting it to look this nice. Strangely enough, it doesn't look like oily eyelids. It's a different type of oil and you can clearly see that. It actually looks quite fresh and youthful. Um, if I may say so myself, I, I like it more than I thought I would. I actually think it looks pretty nice. Last up is my DIY mascara and I'm kind of uncertain how to apply this. Like, should I use my fingers or an applicator? But I think I am just gonna go for a spoolie or a kind of little brush or something. Mascara spoolies were invented in the 40s, so it's at least historically possible <laughs> that these would have been used, although I would say it's improbable and women would most likely have used brushes. I am just loading up my spoolie here with my makeshift mascara, which is already looking nice and clumpy. <laughs> I think this might just be the least successful of all my DIYs. Let's try it. Okay, but something is actually happening. Um, it's at least making my lashes black. I mean, obviously it's not giving me any lift or volume or anything like that, but it is coating my lashes and that's what the goal is here. It is actually doing that and it doesn't look horrible. Not at all actually. It's actually quite nice. Ooh, did you see that by the way? The castor oil makes it super easy to wipe off any mistakes. Okay, I honestly feel if I had curled my lashes beforehand this would actually look really nice. I am super surprised guys. Look how Good this actually looks. Since it's only really coats, I am kind of tempted to just do a little sweep in my eyebrows as well. Maybe just comb them into place a little bit. That is nice. Of course, you can only do this when your eyebrows are already dark, but... Oh. Okay, here we are. This is my makeup look, my full face of makeup using only historical DIY beauty recipes. I'm gonna be honest, I did not expect it to look this good. I feel like if I were to go out like this, um, I mean my blush is a little bit heavy, but other than that I don't think people would notice anything strange about me. Of course it's a very light and natural application, that's the whole point. Um, throughout large chunks of history makeup was just not done, um, not something that was supposed to be visibly worn, so we would stick to things that just slightly enhanced beauty without looking overly made up. So I think in that regard, this is a huge success. I surprisingly love the castor oil on the eyelids. I love the mascara. I love the beetroot lips. The powder, not so much. Maybe it needs to be more finely ground. But then again, I'm not sure how accurate my rice flour is as compared to um, the stuff that would have been available back then. Very, very pleasantly surprised. This is not bad at all. I quite like this look and I will wear it for the rest of the day, actually which I really wasn't expecting. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this, guys, watching this little experiment with me. If you did enjoy, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you would like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there'll be links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!